Cleora McGee. I am the chair for the City of Flint Charter Review Commission. It is so great to have all of you here this evening. One of the things we are trying to do with the commission is to make sure that citizens are involved in this process and that you as citizens will have a voice and that we want you to understand that we are depending on you. We have to write it, of course, we have to do the revision, but we need your input. We want you to always be available, be involved, and be there. We need you to have our backs. Okay? So this evening, uh, we have a, our program is, we only have two hours, so we want to make sure we get everything in so that uh, we can get your input, your opinions, your suggestions, and so we want to move forward. And so at this time, I would like to introduce you to our other commissioners. We have two out tonight. Mrs. Uh, Victoria McKenzie is ill. Uh, she's been out for a while. And uh, Mr. John Cherry is uh, in flight at this time. And so they're not here tonight. But I'd like to introduce you to our other commissioners. Uh, Ms. Heidi Panna, Mrs. Heidi Panna. She is the chairperson of our public outreach committee, and she is the one that uh, has done all of this work to get you here. I'd like you, for you to meet our newest commissioner. As you know, Brian Larkin was one of the commissioners, and uh, he resigned because of his new position at the city of Flint. And so I would like for you to meet our newest commissioner, Mr. Quincy Murphy. <laughs> Mr. Jim Richardson, he was on the door. Okay, there you are, Jim. <laughs> Mr. Barry Williams. Mr. Charles Metcalf, he's the one running around with the camera. <laughs> Mr. Marsha Wesley. And so um, we, we want to. Um, Who are you? Cleora McGee. <laughs> we, we, this is our second large uh, community meeting that we've held. We had one in September at the University of Michigan. And uh, although this, this is our second large community meetings, we have been meeting and meeting and meeting. If, when you uh, open your folders, you'll see that we have at least eight meetings a month. And our different, uh, we have two committee meetings uh, for each of our committees, and we also have um, our general meetings, which are twice a month. So committee meetings meet twice a month, the uh, general committee meets twice a month, and we also have an advisory committee that Heidi will talk to you about a little bit later. But I would like to thank um, Grace Emanuel Church for allowing us to, to use this great facility. I'd also like to thank our photographer, videographer. And what's your... That's me. That's me. <laughs> Mr. Paul Herring. I'd like to thank uh, Bill Hammond. Because, and, and I'd also like to thank all of the commissioners. B Bill Hammond and all of the commissioners uh, uh, are responsible for the food tonight. So I'd like to give them a hand. I'd also like to thank the city clerk's office. As you know, um, we, the, the city clerk serves as our um, uh, liaison with the city. And so uh, there's a lot of work uh, involved in, in, in the preparations for meetings and so forth. So we're very grateful to Ms. Inez Brown and her staff at the city clerk's office. I'd also like to thank um, Mr. Delma Jackson. He's going to serve as our facilitator tonight. And again, I'd like to thank all of you for being here and um, make sure that, you, you know, if there's, uh, when you, at your tables, ask questions, give your opinions, we want to hear from you. And don't make this your last time coming to our meetings. As a matter of fact, we would love to have you at our general commission meetings. We need, it's good to look out in the audience because we're sitting there, uh, you know, in the council chamber, and that's kind of an imposing figure sitting there. And, you know, lots of time is just us. And we want to see the community there so that you can get a feel for what we're going through, for, for the work that we're doing, and also be able to give us advice through our advisory committee or you can go online and uh, 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 with the, our website and our Facebook and just 
give us information, give us feedback. We want to hear from you. And so at this time, I would like to introduce to you Mr. Delma Jackson, who is going to be our facilitator for this evening. And he, is, he also has uh, worked with the uh, Imagine Flint uh, planning group, um, and he's, um, he works for wellness. So Mr. Delma Jackson. Good evening, everyone. Can everybody hear me okay? All right, I always prefer not to use a mic if I don't have to. Um, there are just a couple things that I'm wanting to go over uh, before I hand over things to back to Heidi so that she can um, begin to go through her presentation. Um, so there are a couple things that I wanted to bring to you all attention. First, logistically, in case you're visiting here for the first time, the restrooms are right around the corner, right behind this wall here. So if you follow this hallway, I believe this hallway as well, and then um, you'll find them right in the center on the other side of this partition um, or wall. Having said that, um, phone check right quick. Uh, while I'm talking to you, yeah, I was guilty myself. Right. Um, a couple of things I want to go over very briefly. Uh, the first was our purpose, uh, just kind of reviewing why we we are here, um, and then secondly, um, some group agreement that would hopefully help you know us uh, use our time as as uh, best as possible. Right. So in terms of meeting purpose, um, and it is posted up here behind me. I apologize if I'm in your line of sight. Um, the purpose for our evening, um, to learn about the Flint City Charter, um, the review process itself, and to also explore different types of local government structures. Right? Um, secondly, we want to begin a community dialogue on the different forms of local government and what we should have in the City of Flint Charter. And then lastly, um, to share additional ways in which each one of us might get further involved in the Charter itself and in the process. So that was the purpose. Um, next, I wanted to briefly go over group agreements. Um, we only have, as you can see, four. Um, our goal here is to focus on the purpose of the meeting. Um, because of how big this issue is, it would obviously be very easy to kind of start delving into some sub-conversations, right? Conversations that are related to this, but are specific to this. And so in order to use the short amount of time we have, Given how many people we have in this space, we want to make sure we stay focused on why we're here as specifically as possible. Um, secondly, we really want to encourage folks to stay actively engaged. Um, there may be things said um, that you might disagree with, right? And one of the natural responses we have as human beings is to kind of check out mentally when we hear things we don't like, right? Um, but that we're asking you to kind of fight that urge. Right? It's a really stay engaged. If you need to take a phone call or anything like that, just try to be mindful of the process and take the call out, outside of this area so we don't disturb other folks. Um, next, that's also connected to actively listening. Um, again, when people say things we agree with, it's very easy to stay tuned in. Not so much when we don't necessarily agree. So it's kind of connected to that other piece. Um, just making sure that, that you don't, you're not missing key information um, because you have to check out. Um, which connects to the last one. Stay committed to the process. There may be times where you're not clear on what we're doing, where we are at any given time, and we will do our best to make sure you are. But don't hesitate to ask questions if you need to, and then also um, try to stay with us in terms of the process. There may be things you feel need to be covered that are not, please let us know, right? So any one of the commissioners, myself, any one of us that are here working on, on all of our behalves, let us know if you feel like we're missing some key components, um, but try to do so in a way that doesn't disturb the process that's already been put together. Does that make sense? Yes. Can we all agree collectively to these agreements? Yes? yes? I feel like I'm hearing from 50%. Yeah. 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 Amen, brother. Awesome. Thank you. 
All right, so without further ado, I'd like to pass it back to Heidi, and she will begin um, to take you through the charter of initial piece itself. So, thank you. Thank you, Thelma. And I'd also like to um, introduce uh, Adam Lee, who's the one of our uh, his intern working with the Charter Commission. Um, I, right there, but yeah. So Ali's uh, working with the Charter Commission to help us make sure that we have the support we need to, to do a good job in our work. And he'll be with us for the next uh, four months, so we're really glad to have him. He's a student at the University of Michigan Flint. And also, um, Grace Emanuel Baptist Church has been uh, awesome. Uh, thank you, Grace Emanuel, so much for uh, taking care of us here this evening and, and offering us the use of your, of your space. So I'm going to... There we go. So I'm going to use this mic because I have a little bit softer voice. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over a short presentation about the uh, Charter Commission in general. So I'm going to go over this pretty quickly because some of you have already seen this information, but I want you to have a kind of a, a baseline of what's going on with the Charter. We're going to talk about the Charter itself, um, the different forms of government in our agenda. After that, we're going to work at our tables and um, discuss the, the local forms of government. Then you all have to do a report out, and we'll talk about other ways to get involved in uh, what's going to go on from here. So the same Charter review process. As many of you know, uh, our city charter is the document that describes how the city of Flint residents want to be represented. Uh, it's like the constitution of the city of Flint. So it's like the constitution for, for this community. And in Michigan, there's an act called the Home Rule Act that describes how charters are developed and uh, empowers cities to decide how they want to be governed. And it's written by the Charter Commission but it does have some state review eventually when a, a document is proposed, and this is an if, because the Charter Commission could decide the Charter is great the way it is, and we're just going to keep it. So this, if the Charter Commission chooses to propose a new Charter, it would go to the voters for approval. Also, if uh, one option is to just ask for amendments, those, of course, would go to the voters for approval. And uh, if it's turned down, then what we have remains, if it, uh, it's approved, then that would be the new, new Charter. So this is a short list of things that must be included in the charter. Uh, selection of a mayor, uh, election of council or commission, different offices such as the clerk, treasurer, assessor, those are required by the uh, Home Rule Act. Also, how elections are held, how uh, nominations are created for those elections, the um, taxing rates, things around public uh, health and safety, and how ordinances are adopted. We can also add additional items to the charter if uh, we so choose, and our charter has many of these, these things in there about how to borrow money, sewer and water and electric, public utilities, something very important to all of us right now. Uh, also, if, how property is acquired, public transportation, uh, licensing, and all of those things you see there. So the Charter Commission itself is a nine-member body, and you got to meet uh, many of seven of us tonight. We're all City of Flint uh, residents. We were elected at a citywide election back in November of 2014. We took off, oh yeah, May. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so our role is to review the chart and determine if changes need to be made and again, present those for the community to vote on. We also have three main committees. Um, you know, you've met uh, Cleora McGee, our chairperson. I am the chairperson of the Public Outreach Committee. So my role is to help reach out to all of you, um, my friends from the community that care as much about the city as I do. And the, we have the Rules Committee, which writes the rules for the Charter Commission, and our Finance Committee, which helps us find money to help do the work we need to do. On top of that, we've added a Bonus Committee, which is open to all of you to participate in, and that's the Charter Review Advisory Committee. In your folder, You'll see on the left-hand side, just behind the meeting calendar that Cleo had talked about, is information on the Charter Review Advisory Committee. 
So this is a great way to get involved in the charter and stay involved. This group is um, open to any city residents. You can uh, just fill this out and leave it on your table or return it to one of the commissioners if you want to participate. The second page talks about what the roles of the Charter Commission Advisory Committee are. And basically that advisory committee is a way for um, residents to be part of the review process with us, right along with us. So as we're talking about an issue, the advisory committee is talking about the same issue and then that information comes back to us to help, help inform decision making. We also thought it was really important to be really clear about the principles that we want for the um, charter, charter review process, because this is a process. We want to make sure that this is an open process that all City of Flint residents can participate in, and we want to make sure that um, voices are recognized from the public, that you have access to information. That's why we have all of our, uh, many of our documents out there on an uh, open shared drive where you can all access the information. We also want to make sure that we get representation from all parts of the city, um, residents from all different wards coming and sharing their thoughts. So our advisory committee rotates around different wards. Um, and we want to make sure that we also take this opportunity to educate everybody on what's in the charter. It's a big document. I mean, it, it's not light reading. It's kind of complicated. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to know about the charter, the opportunities and options that we have, and be able to participate in the process. So I'm going to go through a little bit about where we've been and what we've been doing over the past uh, few months. So we started in June. That's when we officially started working. From throughout the summer, we were just getting organized, developing our rules. We had some trainings from the Michigan Municipal League on, on uh, charter work and reached out to the City of Flint elected officials to get thoughts from them and feedback from department heads. Then in September, we had our kickoff meeting. How many folks were at that kickoff meeting? Thank you so much for continuing to stay, stay involved. Um, it was really great, and that helped get us a lot of initial uh, ideas on what people wanted to see in the charter. Then we started taking each part of the charter, article by article, and looking at it individually. So there's nine articles. We started off in October through December on Article 1, general administrative items. It also includes things like um, uh, how to hold people accountable when the charter's not being followed. It also includes information about um, making sure uh, ethical standards are being met. So there's been some really good conversations we've been having at the advisory committee on those items. So then in January, here we are with the City Community Meeting on Form of Government. So this is a really important part of the, the whole process. Think about Form of Government. It's the big overarching question that helps define a lot of the other pieces. So the big question, what kind of form of government, and then a lot of the other pieces will start to fall in line once we know what kind of form of government residents of the city want to have. So then after we um, go into the following month, We'll be working on Article 2, which is elections and representation. So you can expect um, to hear more about a big community meeting that will be happening at the end of March, talking about ward structure. How many wards should we have? Should they stay the way they are? Should they be changed? How often should people be um, elected, two years or four years? Those are the kind of questions we'll be talking about in March. Today is about the form of government. Then we'll go into the roles of council, legislative, mayor, and executive branch. That will be into the summer months. Then um, August through September, we'll be looking at Articles 5 and 6, which is uh, the Civil Service Commission, different staffs and boards. There's lots of them in your charter. Uh, and then October through December, Articles 7, 8, 9, Finance, Utilities, and Miscellaneous. So one thing that's important to know is this is subject to change. So if you were at the kickoff meeting, you heard me say that we would have our, our uh, first draft done by, we think, August of this year. Well, because we've run into um, capacity issues with not having a lot of staff to support this effort, we've had to stretch that timeline out. So we're now thinking December, and again, it may, it may change beyond that. So again, goal is to get a draft done by the end of this year. Um, once a draft is completed, if we choose to, 
to make changes, it goes to the state of Michigan for review. The state can decide uh, to give us thoughts and comments on how to uh, make changes. Uh, so it's reviewed by the Attorney General. But the citizens have the ability to say either, yes, those are good suggestions, we'll add them, or no, we just want what we put together. So it's great we have an opportunity to tell the governor no. <laughs> and we do have an attorney that will be working, bringing on board over the next couple of months, an outside attorney. So the, we do have support of the city attorney, but we felt it would be important to get another person from outside to be able to help provide some unbiased thoughts for us uh, throughout the process. So all the commissioners decided to um, become charter commissioners because we deeply care about this community. And I know a lot of faces in this room, and I know you all deeply care about this community too, which is why you're here. And that's why this charter is important, because this is an opportunity for the citizens to say how we want our city to be operating, what we want our city to uh, do for us. So this is our charter. And this is an empowering moment for all of us. So we should really recognize the significance of this event. We haven't done a charter review since 1974. Uh, so it's, in some cases, you know, once in a, or twice in a lifetime that this kind of thing comes up. So it's an amazing opportunity for us to create change that we want to see for ourselves. So now I'm going to talk about form of government. And there are a couple of slides here in your folder, in your blue folder on the left, I'm sorry, the right side, that have some of this information. I'm going to refer to those. And um, so this is really, that was an overview. This is really what we're here to talk about tonight. So when you think about form of government, you hear lots of different terms. One of the things to know is that there's not a standard language to talk about forms of government. People call it different things. So for the purposes of discussion tonight, we're going to use the terms that people in Michigan are commonly uh, using. And there's two main types. So think of, a, think of a spectrum. Here's a spectrum. And on one side is the strong mayor form of government. On the other side would be the council manager form of government. So let's talk about strong, strong mayor. That means that the mayor is directly elected by the people. It's a full-time salaried mayor. Um, this is the, the type of government that we currently have in our charter. Notice I didn't say the type of government we have today. Um, I like to think about the form of government question also as um, there's three different realities that we're facing right now. There's the 1974 charter that our community approved, and this is the guiding document for our city. So this is how we're supposed to operate. Then we have what we have today. So this was a strong mayor form of government. Uh, what kind of form of government do we have today? State. Right, so we, we are still in a state takeover. We have a transition advisory board. We don't really have local control. We're, we're you know, so the, the thing is, is we're, we don't really have a good, um, it's obviously not one of these two, is it? <laughs> so that's the second reality, what we have today. The third reality is where we're headed, what this document is going to do for this community and how it's going to move us forward. So we got to kind of keep that in mind when we're talking at the tables um, and know about the issues that are facing us today and how can our charter help prepare us for a better future. So oh, Quincy, if you wouldn't mind going back a little bit, I wanted to... Um, a couple of things about the strong mayor. They get to appoint their top administrators. Uh, so they're department heads. And they have, sometimes the mayor has veto power over council decisions. Um, so that's a may. So there's little variations on this theme often. Think of the strong mayor as the presidential style of government. For uh, the next type, council manager. Council has the role to set policy. And there's a legislative body. Their job is goal setting and strategic planning. So they're supposed to be thinking about that future of the city. Their goal would be um, to adopt a budget, approve things like our capital improvement plan, and then take action through ordinances and resolutions. 
Um, so their role is legislative policy. Manager's role would be the department administrative head of the city. So that city manager would run the day-to-day -day operations based on the council's policy. They would be um, hired and fired at the will of city council, and that's kind of the corporate style of government. So think of presidential style, corporate style. Okay, thank you. So then there's a couple of other types. There's the, um, so I remember there's a spectrum, right? There's strong mayor, and over here is uh, council manager. And then in the middle, there's other things that are kind of like you take a little bit from here, you bring it in, you take a little bit from here, and you bring it in. So non-executive mayor, that's a different type. It's where the mayor sits on the city council. Sometimes the mayor is elected from council, like elected from the group that is city council. Um, the mayor would then chair the city council meetings. They would be the chief um, policy person because basically they're helping lead council. And they would be the ceremonial official that would cut the ribbons and um, you know do all those kind of give keys to the city, kiss babies, that kind of stuff. Um, department heads would then operate independently of the mayor. In that instance, they would report to the city manager. So in this non-executive, there is a city manager that also is, is part of this. Um, so that mayor is not the central administrator in that form. So then there's this other concept called hybrid, which has many different variations. And I just have a couple of examples here. So um, hybrid is basically when you take parts of either and, and start to bring them you know, bring pieces together. So a mayor that's maybe elected at large versus sitting on council and elected from council. Mayor who has the authority to hire and fire the administrator versus council having that authority. Um, and then sometimes uh, the council would confirm the mayor's appointments. So just know that there's these two broad different categories that are very different, and then there are all these variations on the theme in between. Hi, real quick. Yeah. Obama just gave Flint 80 million. Oh, Obama just gave Flint 80 million. Let's see my hand for President Obama. It's exciting. That's exciting. Thank you, Tony. Well, that's, that's, that's from Abel. Thank you, Abel. Appreciate it. So this, that's amazing. It's really great. So this slide just shows you the differences between a strong mayor and a non-executive mayor or the you know, mayor council. So strong mayor elected by the citizens, um, uh, then also appoints and removes key officials. Um, strong mayor is a salaried full-time mayor, which we, have, we should have today. Uh, non-executive slash um, council, so that would be when a mayor is a member of council. Mayor may chair the council meetings, and um, mayor may serve as the chief administrative official. Um, so, I want to also point to you a couple things that are in your folder. There's this sheet that you see here. It's a it's like a comparison chart of those two main types of government. So you can, at a glance, compare what the differences are. Additionally, you've got three pages that talk about common issues and pro and con arguments in elections to change the form of government. So this is, somebody has sat down and came up with what's good about each of these types. So I thought it would be important to present to everybody information that's unbiased, that just lays it out for you. Um, there is a lot of information out there and it was very hard to find things that didn't like push you to one side or the other. So know that we, we do want to make sure that you have unbiased information when you're when you're thinking and talking about this. So that's this is great reading for um, if you're a speed reader, great, but you know take home and, and read at your leisure. So we're going to um, so I, I wanted to just basically stop and take a couple questions at this point before we go into group exercise. So I know it's a lot of information. I also wanted to make sure to point out that this is just the beginning of the conversation on a form of government. I don't want you to feel that you have to make a decision tonight. This is a big decision. 
I want to hear from everyone what your thoughts are, all the commissioners do, but we also know that this is going to be an ongoing conversation. So we have some opportunities coming up to follow up on this meeting that we'll talk about a little bit later. I will point out that we do have on our meeting calendar in bold under the month of February a community meeting on February 18th at Flint Public Library where we're going to be discussing the outcomes of this meeting. So we'll type up the notes, we'll make sure to get them all out to you in a timely manner so you can review them, and then we'll continue talking about form of government um, at that time. So any, any questions so far? Yes? Under the uh, non-executive mayor council, the mayor is elected by the council members, is that correct? There's one variation where the mayor um, would be part of council, so everybody would elect their council person, and then within city council, council members would select who is the mayor out of, basically out of who's on, so that's one form, yes. One option amongst many. Yes, my question is, we're discussing all these different forms about the charter form of government. How does this play, uh, how does this work with the, fine, the, the laws that um, Governor Schneider has over this city in the state, the financial emergency manager? I don't understand that. How do those go together? I don't. That's a good question. So I'm going to just repeat that for everybody. So the, the question is, how does the current uh, emergency manager laws and things that have been enacted by uh, the governor and the emergency managers affect this process? This yes. Particularly? Yes. Okay. So we are, uh, the commission is operating uh, I'm trying to update this document. So if we didn't have an emergency manager, this would be how we how we are governed. This would describe it. And so the thought is eventually we're going to get to have our control back. <laughs> and when we do, then this document becomes in effect again. Or a future charter that's presented to the community and voted on if approved. And then in the meantime, we are where we are. So that'll just be in waiting. I'm good. Yeah, it's, so it's technically in effect, but there's been some things enacted by the emergency managers through executive orders and then through the governors that that go against what's in here. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah right. some things that are not being followed. And that's something that we, we are talking about a lot during the advisory committee meetings and definitely concerned about. But so, and, and there's so much to talk about this is a great opportunity for us to begin conversating about the um, group exercise. So, want me to talk about the, the next step? Or we have another question? Just one thing. Um, so, if like the form of government we have now under the emergency manager, uh, somewhat, um, if we do change the charter, um, can you come in again and pretty much say A, B, C, D, and E? And I'm asking that question you saw. Now I'm trying to figure out, so why are we even looking at that if the governor can come in and change it at his will, if you can answer that question. So let me just repeat that for the other folks in the room. The question was, um, the governor can could potentially come back and uh, say we get out of re receivership, we are under local control, possibility that we could come back into state receivership, uh, again, is a possibility because, uh, you know, and that would be dependent on a lot of, of factors, but we, we have to think about this from terms of where do we want to be? And how can we position ourselves to be able to um, take care of, of our needs? Because the charter has been around since 1974. We've only been under this um, state for a, a couple years. Too many, but yeah. So we need to think about the long term of the city, understanding where we are at today. Uh, the qu so what you said earlier, if we decide to change, then the state would have to accept it, or what would the state's involvement be with the change if the change is made? The question is, if the state, um, so we want to propose something, what's the state's role? Can they change it? 
You know, didn't you say earlier when we were talking that if you decided to change, the state would have to be a part of it, or the well, state would be involved? So what we do is we send the charter to the state for a review, a legal review, and the uh, attorney general in their office looks at it. They will tell us um, suggestions on things that they might suggest we look at. But then that comes back to the Charter Commission, and they're just suggestions, so we can take them or we can say no. Okay. Um, I just want to say, I was kind of against it at first, but I'm starting to see now. I like this. I'm okay. starting to come together. I thought you guys trying All right. To Thanks, Leroy. Right. <laughs> Makes you feel good that, that you're, you're with us. That's always pulling something out here. Yes. So I got a question. Being that the, um, <laughs> being that the state is, um, okay. is got this emergency manager in, do you think that they will be kind of biased or trying to move us to uh, another form of government? And if we don't go, could that political See, that's what I'm talking about right there. Thing, um, Which his question is, is the governor swaying us and trying to say, you know, we should go one way or the other? Good question. That's what I was So, and we, we are independent of of all of that. So we're going to, okay. together, Quincy, we're all going to make our own choice on how, how we want to do that. But the, there is, uh, you know, the state does suggest you look at what they call the model city charter. And, and so that is something that they, they gave to us and said, look at this as an opportunity. And maybe you take some things from here. Mm -hmm. So they're providing suggestions, but they're not saying what we should do. Okay. Yes. I just wanted to say that, like, if you want whatever the charter recommends to not be interfered with by the governor, you have to look at yourself both as a resident of Flint and a resident of the state of Michigan. And you have to be aware of Public Act 436, mm -hmm. which is what Snyder passed in November of 2012 that would enable him to, like, usurp any decisions made here. So that's really what it comes down to is that specific piece of legislation that's going to dictate how powerful these decisions here are tonight. Right, so we, we still have a public act 436 in effect, um, and we, we definitely need to be, be aware of that. Okay, so are you guys ready to, oh, yeah, oh wait, okay. of course, Tony, we well, of course have a last, you can have the last word. Just to touch on that, why don't we just skip Snyder and just go straight to the federal? Can we do that? No, I know, it's probably, I know I'm not the question was, can we just yeah. skip Snyder and go take the phone? Well, that, that, <laughs> we can't. Come on, don't we want to do that? We can. And this is, a, this is a good point, just to point out that the state of Michigan empowers local communities to give the local community the ability to self-govern. So that's in the state constitution, that's in the Home Rule Act, that gives us the ability to have local decision-making and local representation. Which but I guess cool. what I'm trying to say is, why are we waiting for the federal government because we've got to go through all the steps of the state? Mm -hmm. Should there be a shortcut that we say, and they go Well, we've got to follow the process. I know. Okay. Thank you, Ivy. Thank you. I just want to say, there's no way to, to uh, go around the state. But tonight, what we're here for we are looking for the future. We're not here to talk about the day, day operations of the city, although we know it, what's going on now really impacts, and it's really going to impact the revising of the charter. We, we realize that. But we have to work as though the state is not here. And so that's, what, that's how we're going to revise the charter. We can't revise it by uh, dealing with you know, what Governor Snyder is doing at this moment, because. Uh, as you know, in three years, he'll be gone. Yes, ma'am. And there'll be a new uh, governor. Okay? So, well, that's a possibility as well. I understand but, that. but we have to deal with the future. Yeah. And that future is what are we going, how are we going to revise this charter mm -hmm. so that it has impact on the citizens of Flint? Mm -hmm. Okay? Not, you know, we have, we have to go by state rule. Yeah. That, that's a must. We, we can't get around that. But let's talk about the future for Flint, okay, regarding this charter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wise words from our chair. Okay, so we're going to go um, into the next section on our agenda, which is um, some group discussion and some questions in your in your folder. I'm going to turn it over to Delma.
All right, so I just want to take a couple minutes to try to articulate the process. Microphone, please. I just want to take a couple minutes to articulate um, the process that you will be going through at your individual tables and then get out of your way so you can talk amongst yourselves. So um, what we're asking for is that each table identify three folks. Um, one person would kind of help keep track of time. There are four questions that we want you to examine. And so we're asking one person to be considerate of the time crunch that we're in and make sure that we don't get caught up in one question or another and never make it to, to the rest of the questions. Um, we need, we're asking for another person at the table to be willing to record some of the comments that come up as you all are discussing some of the main points. Um, as the recorder, um, make sure that as you're wrapping up, you check in with the group just to make sure that everyone feels like their voice is included in what you recorded. It's easy to miss things as people are talking in a group. And then um, we last person is a speaker, someone who will be willing to take what has been recorded and share it with the larger group as a whole. So we're asking for those three folks to be identified at each and every table. Um, if you look at your folders inside should be included a uh, try to review advisory committee list of discussion questions. There should be four of these questions that you all will be examining. Three. Oh, I'm sorry. Three. There should be three questions that you all are examining. And so we're asking you to take your time, work through each question. Um, if you need any assistance, if there's any confusion about the question or anything like that, feel free to tap any one of the charter members around. Feel free to tap me. I will be, you know, walking around and, and checking in with folks and just making sure everything is okay. Um, in terms of time, we are looking at going from now to roughly 6.55. Right, seven o'clock or so. So as the time is getting closer and closer to wrapping up, I will let you know that. So I'll also be keeping track of time. Um, are there any questions? I know I kind of rushed through that, but I want to make sure you all have time to do this process. Any questions? Any questions? All right, if there are no questions, feel free to begin now. And like I said, if you need any assistance, just tap any one of us. Thanks. Oh, name tags. If you have not put on your name tag, uh, make sure you do that as well. Thank you. Quincy. It is that time. Uh, so if I can get everyone's attention. Um, for the sake of time, uh, we are asking each group to make sure you pick out the highlights. We're looking to aim for about two minutes per group. We have about 12 groups, and if you want to get out of here for 8 o'clock, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I want to make sure everybody hears this. Excuse me. I appreciate it. All right. We're asking each group to take no more than two minutes just to ensure that folks uh, get out of here on time, right? Um, if you're still kind of wrapping up uh, in terms of the recorders, feel free to continue. We'll just go to, you know, a group that's actually ready to present. Um, we would ask, too, that whatever the lar wherever your large sheet is, if it's not already posted, that when your group goes, you would post it for us um, so that we can see it. Um, Ali is going to transcribe me, he's going to record what is heard um, and have a printed version of that forthcoming. Um, we also have the video recording as well, so we're definitely documenting your feedback and we want you to know that. Um, is there any particular table that feels ready to go first? Yes, I heard a yes, but oh, perfect, thank you. Uh, can we please make sure that we're giving each group our undivided attention? 
even if you're whispering amongst yourself and you got 60 people whispering, it gets loud. So, uh, for those who are still talking to their neighbors, you're the ones I'm talking to. Thank you. All right, let's give our attention to that first group. Uh, Yeah, as far as uh, our table, we chose the uh, strong mayor, and principally because he is accountable to the voice of the people being elected citywide, and not just by the council. The second one, uh, as any other important elements that we should address, we chose that there should be some kind of a provision for like a water authority, which would have you know, some kind of say over cost, the uh, quality, the availability, all those kind of issues. Um, and something along the lines of a resident requirement for the police and firemen in an effort to prevent or to provoke uh, community policing and fire protection. And a stronger jurisdiction for the Flint police because we've got uh, other police departments that are all up, in. all up in our stuff, then <laughs> that should be our jurisdiction. If we need to hire more, we need to hire more. Now, number three, what to see in a local government. Well, the three most important things to our table were accountability, direct and active involvement in the community, and most of all, besides the uh, accountability would be transparency. We need to know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. I need my glasses. Question one, strong mayor, the entire table. Uh, why give up our right to vote now in 2016 when for most females it took 70 years for us to get the right to vote? Give citizens choices as to who runs the city. That was the, the why of that. Citizens uh, uh, gives feeling of investment and that's democracy. Citizens choose, they have input, they allow citizens a sense of ownership. It also includes trust and accountability. Question number two, complete transparency, strong leadership, all wards be equally represented. And also number three for that, uh, return an active, strong ombudsman's office that has accountability. Question three, uh, we said we need a mechanism that allows us to recall an ineffective or non-productive council person. A mechanism in the charter that allows a recall of an ineffective, non-productive non council person. And uh, number two in that, a citizen advisory board to the mayor. Underneath that, a youth voice in city government that the mayor could partner with uh, student governments from public, private, and charter schools. Next. Is anyone else ready for that? All right, I'm headed over here. Thank you all for being mindful of time, too. I really appreciate that. The first one we said uh, we currently have a strong mayor, a strong mayor. Must elect the right mayor, as we just did. Uh, we, we definitely uh, need strong leadership in this city. Um, we also said we prefer a presidential style of uh, government 
That means a separation of power with legislators, judicial, and executive branch of government. You got to have that. You can't have one unit making laws and passing laws for everybody. You know, it should be a check and balance is what we were trying to say. Uh, number two, citizens should be more protective of ind individuals elected to office. I think we all understand that one. We really need to look at the individual who's running, and they need to be more selective. They need to be in tune with what that individual is standing for. And that's how we select our leaders in this city, to elect our leaders in this city. We should have a, they, we should have an understanding of what they are going to do for this city before we just elect them into those positions. We need to establish a higher criteria for elected officials. I think we all understand that one. We need to set some goals, some points that they should be able to achieve or should achieve before they got to that position. Number three, provide more services for the city. Uh, for the citizens of Flint, uh, accountability for all elected officials, hold them accountable for what they say, make sure they do it, um, and effectively handle all budget issues. In other words, if they're not budget conscious, then that's what we wouldn't have ended up in this situation in the first place. The Flint being taken over by an emergency manager, we would have been doing pretty good. So, all right. That's all right. Thank you. For a strong mayor. Can you stand up, please? Oh, okay. Strong mayor. And uh, basically, everything everybody else was saying, that's what we did. Accountability, transparency, everything. So, strong mayor. We, uh, are beginning to sound like an echo chamber here. We, um, but we, we had one caveat. We, we recognize that our current form of government isn't really and truly a strong mayor form of government because our mayor does not have veto power. And we felt that that was important to keep. And so we have a strong mayor hybrid form of government in that the mayor will not have veto power over the council. Now, if people felt a true presidential form needed to be in effect, and the mayor would have veto power, you would have to turn around, and you'd also have to give the council override power. So that's how you achieve your full checks and balances, whichever way you go. We left question number one really to last, after we talked about all the other problems that we had to try and figure out what the answer was. And we really decided that no matter which form we went to, there were ways to achieve what we need to have happen either way. However, we did feel like so many other people in the room have already said, is that people need to still have a popularly elected mayor, no matter which form you're really going with, because you want to have that kind of representation. So, <clears throat> accountability, checks and balances, that was really our number one thing that we ought to see to get happen in, in whatever form of charter we go with. And <clears throat> we thought there needed to be a very clear division of responsibility Right now, a lot of the roles get muddled. Our council people end up spending 90% of their time answering constituent concerns. If we actually have a strong mayor form of government, the mayor's office should be handling the majority of that and not the council people. The council people should be able to concentrate on directions and look at the big picture and figure out where the city needs to go. But they can't do that now because they spend all their time dealing with constituent concerns and then they get to the council meeting and they all have to vote up and down on all these expenditures, and they never get a chance to sit down and decide, you know, where do we want to be in five years? What do we need to do to help guide our city? So <laughs> then we also thought there needs to be a real spirit of cooperation. Right now, that doesn't exist. So we want to see our mayor and our either our city administrator or manager, whichever form we end up with, and our council to all be very cooperative with each other. We also felt, and we didn't put it on the on list, but we agreed that the Ombudsman's Office probably should be reactivated, or at least some other form of giving a way for citizens to have some accountability with their government. So, anything else? All right.
Okay, to uh, question uh, number one, form of government. Mayor elected by the people, appoint city administrator with, the, with approval uh, by council. City administrator manages city department heads. Uh, city council approves budget, legislative uh, ordinance, special attention to effect change in the mayor, city administrator, and city council members when needed. Question number two, uh, other elements to establish protective measures to maintain control from outside of state government appointees. And number three, um, assure city administrator, director of city department have qualifications. Number two, accountability within city structure, cross accountability within the, ma uh, within the major players, effectiveness in the players, and responsiveness. And uh, we definitely uh, uh, believe in a strong mayor. Thank you. by the people, getting the people out to vote is one of the main things that we want to always uh, be involved in. A balance of government, executive level, judicial, and legislative. And on number two, um, <coughs> residency requirements for um, elected officials and employees of the city. And hard and fast financial accountability transparency, and then both needs to be enacted. Number three, the mayor has the power back, balance between the city council and mayor for cooperation and balancing the budget and running of the city effectively. An immediate response to urgent matters, no matter the location throughout the city. Okay, ours never got to the large paper, but um, we'll just tape our little one up there. <laughs> uh, the form of government we prefer, it's more of a hybrid. Uh, we, have, we would go with a strong mayor with some major elements would be modified. The appointments that the mayor would be allowed to make would be limited though significant to the mayor's public leadership and communication roles maybe who is press secretary is or whoever. But all appointments, department heads, would be, um, they'd have to apply for the positions based upon their qualifications. And they would not be friends of the mayor. They would be qualified for the position that they are the head of. And um, we, uh, this has just got to happen. We think that by not having people qualified uh, for the departments that they head up, it destabilizes um, our long-term priorities as a city. And um, and if we and these uh, department heads should also be reviewed uh, on a yearly basis to make sure they're actually doing their job and that they're their uh, department is actually functioning and moving forward according to the way that they should. And if that's not happening, maybe it's time to change the department head. Uh, number two, some other important elements would be to sustain uh, long-term priorities, whatever that means. Um, and yeah, I said we do the best. And then the other um, three important things would be what everyone else has said, the continuity, transparency, and accountability. Um, I think it's a little scary to leave city council in charge of our uh, city. I'm saying that. All right, which tables have not yet gone? Which tables have not yet gone? Out of those tables, who would like to go next? One? Okay. Question one, uh, what form of government do we prefer? 
we prefer a strong form of government. Reason why it has more accountability, and if we just review the past years, it has shown us what a management form of government has done and what situation it has gotten us in. Research has also shown that the strong form of their government never reverts and go back to the weak form of government. So we need to continue on the strong form man of government. Question two, uh, inf any, informa any other important elements that should be added or changed to improve local government? We said revert uh, city council term back to two years uh, versus the four years that we have now. Um, expand the transitional time for the mayor from November to January before they officially take office. That gives them more time to put a transition team together and have people in place to begin to move them in as do, they do with the president. Number three, what are the three most important things you can you want to see in local government? They are accountability, transparency, great character, high moral, strong leadership. Um, but we do, we, we, our form of government that we prefer, we like the strong mayor idea, but we know that that's not working at this moment, so we'd like to see a variation and a hybrid of sorts on that. What exactly, we really can't tell you because there needs to be more discussions regarding the roles of both council people and the mayor to make it for the citizens of Flint. On question two, uh, we want to limit the number of department heads, and they should be, and um, we want it um, ward division done by population, equal people, equal amount, equal vote. And we want our ombudsman office back. Yeah. On number three, the most important things to us is a yearly review of the department heads and their agendas and accomplishments. We want transparency and accountability, and we want strong but lean government. because we weren't implemented. It's because dictatorship came in 
and took over against the will of the people. And so we have to have something to stand up and fight for us that will stand and be our guidelines that too will, will have a structured relationship in our city. Thank you. Is there any other group? I want to make sure yeah. I'm one. Thank you. Our group decided on a hybrid form of government and looking at, they wanted a popularly elected mayor, and but that mayor would share responsibilities with the council. That way we can look at everybody, get the same information in real time, and they can make decisions that will guide our city forward. And the rest of the things, that was number one. Uh, a better accountability for number two, and transparency for number three. And, and everything else, I think, has already been echoed uh, in this meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for lending your, your voices and your expertise. One thing I forgot to mention, the papers that you all individually wrote on, if you don't mind, we would love to collect those as well, just to make sure we've captured everyone's thoughts. Um, so we're asking you all to leave those with us. You just leave them at the table, we'll come around and collect them. Um, now I will pass the mic back over to Heidi, and she will go through a few more things to kind of close us out. All right, thanks everybody. And I just want to get, uh, raise your hand just so I can know how people found out about the meeting because I love that you're all here and I want to know um, how many people came because they saw it on Facebook? Okay, how many people saw the article in the Courier? Came because of that? Um, how many people, word of mouth, somebody passed out a flyer to you, somebody came and spoke with you and told you about the charter? Okay, that's really helpful. Hospital? Anything else that I didn't mention? Flint yeah. Journal. Flint Journal. Planning. 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 Master plan. <laughs> the master plan. Okay. And the radio. And the radio. Great. This is working. Um, additionally, in your folders, there's a couple things I want to point out. Number one, it's important that you haven't done this yet. Please make sure that you sign in. This is how we're going to keep in touch with you. If for some reason, um, you know, email is not your thing. We'll, do, we'll mail directly to you, but we do prefer email. So um, that's going to be how we're going to keep in touch with everybody and invite you to future meetings. You'll see that on the charter calendar, there's bold, high, bold font on some of those. Those are the meetings that I feel you guys would be most interested in. Those are the meetings where we're going to be talking about the charter. So take a look at that, see which ones fit in your calendar. I want to bring specifically to your attention uh, February 18th, that's going to be at Flint Public Library. We're going to have all the results of this meeting, and we're going to be talking about how to roll that into the charter, right? So that's going to be the next step for the conversation on form of government. Um, additionally, those three questions that you all answered, we know there's a lot of other people out in the, in, in the city that that didn't make it to the meeting tonight because there's so much going on. There's council meeting, there's information about uh, water, and so we're going to put these questions out online so you can get that through Facebook or the email that you're going to receive. You'll get a link to either go and fill out the same questions or send it to somebody else you know who would be really interested in sharing their thoughts. We're going to continue to collect those comments. And um, lastly, I'm going to turn it over to Quincy Murphy, and he's going to do a public comment period, which which is, this is a public meeting, and we are a public body. And everything you've been doing tonight has been public comment. However, we feel it's important to just make sure that it's covered. So we're going to do a public comment period. I'm going to let Quincy run that part. Thank you. I heard some interesting um, feedback. It sounds like we want to go with a strong form of uh, government from the consensus of the room. Um, I don't know about my other colleagues, but it kind of sound that way, but we will be looking at everything. So we want to, um, anybody got any questions, could you please raise your hand? Then I'll come over there to you and you can ask your question. And um, me or one of my colleagues will try to do our best to answer your um, questions. So y'all ready? Cleo, Heidi, 
Okay. Anybody got a question? This, this is not a, not a question, but a, a quick comment. Um, and the comment is this, and I raised this with all of you who were on the ballot, and we had an opportunity to, to talk to you, and I just want to remind you of our conversation. Um, and I, I see reflected here, strong mayor, as an overwhelming choice for uh, our city, but I, but I want here's what I want to ask you because you know there's a lot of smart people in here, and so smart people answer this question. I don't want the answer tonight because I, I think most of you won't you won't have the answer. But I have a list because there's a connection in the mind of most people that that the former government that the communities are that have gone into bankruptcy or have been under emergency management or whatever that they changed their form of government, and voila, they found Nirvana. You know? Well, I just want to share with you, and again, you know, we have PhDs in here, and double masters, and uh, all kinds of Ds and Bs, and, and, and the like. So I just, I want you to tell me whether or not, JDs, why don't you tell me whether or not you know of any uh, research that supports Communities that have gone into receivership or bankruptcy deciding to change their form of government. Now these, this is just an incomplete list of communities that have gone into bankruptcy or that have... Please don't stand up, please, please, please. I'll be done in a minute. I'm good. Um, I'm good. Well, these are communities that have... Um, either gone into bankruptcy or emergency management in the last 50 years. Cleveland, Ohio. Stockton, California. New York City. Detroit. Pontiac. Benton Harbor. Highland Park. Washington, D.C. and Birmingham, Alabama. So your assignment is to tell me which of these communities have changed their form of government as a result of their financial issues. My name is Pamela Coles, and I usually don't say anything, but Flynn is my home, and it means a lot to me uh, to be a part of this. But the question was, and I don't think that we really understood, the question was, what form of government? All of these papers up here say strong form or whatever, but when you go to questions two and three, you've added to the strong form of government, which is not listed. So therefore, you're really talking about a hybrid form of government, but you want an elected mayor. And that's the most important. And after you get your elected mayor, and then you start talking about the duties of what that mayor is going to be, then you come back and decide, well, now what form of government does all of this fall under? You can't just sit here one night with one discussion and say, this is the form of government. Like they say, the charter hasn't been rewritten in all these years. We have the opportunity to do this. We do not have to say strong form and just follow it. We have the opportunity to make our own government. That's basically. And the first and foremost is what we want is an elected mayor. <coughs> then we need to decide what duties and powers we want that elected mayor to have. And from there we can decide, after we get all of that, what form of government it actually falls under. But to come here and say, what form of government, strong form of government, you really, really don't understand what you really, and this is just my opinion, all you're saying is we want an elected mayor by the people. There's a big difference between electing your mayor and having a strong form of government. There's a big difference. And those are the things and the criteria that we need to be talking about.
Thank you. My name is Chris Delmaroni. Uh, a couple of the tables had mentioned about having the police and firefighters live within the city limits. And, and I, my understanding is state law will not allow that. So Correct. that's what I'm going to point out. Well, it's always going to be a problem. What? You can sit a time. Uh, can you say that again? Can you repeat that? Repeat that again. Oh, state law. Um, at least a couple of the tables had mentioned that uh, they felt there should be a requirement for police and fire officials to live within the city limits. And my understanding of state law does not allow that. It can happen if a union contracts agree to it. Right to be poor. This doesn't have to stay a right to work state. Yeah. That's right. Remember all of you when we were marching in there? Right. Yes. Yeah. Good afternoon. My name is A.C. Dumas, and I just uh, forgot one thing that I would like to, and I talked with the Flint City clerk already about this, that I would like after uh, the clerk leaves office for whatever reason that the Flint City Clerk's office becomes an elected office. So they won't have to be at the whims of a council persons that's mad and decide they want to fire the clerk mm -hmm. and can't be independent. I think it should be an elected office. And I've already discussed this with Ms. Brown, so you ought to run and ask her. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, we're about to wrap up. So, go on once, go on twice. That's it. Okay, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you so much for your input. This was a wonderful evening. Please meet us at the library February 7th because all of these. 18th. Um, 18th? Oh, I'm sorry. 18th. Uh, because all of this information will be there for us to delve into it a little bit more. Okay, thank you and good night. Don't forget the mayor's town hall meeting. The mayor's town hall meeting is the 28th of this month, a week from Thursday, at the St. Paul Episcopal Church at 6 o'clock. The mayor's town hall meeting, and everyone is welcome to attend. Also, there's more refreshments. Please feel free to take them with you.